Good day, nerds, and welcome to episode 92 of the Nerd Cantina Show. I'm your host, Ken, joined by my co-host, Steve, and we're going to cover this week's nerd news. We're going to begin an entertainment talk with the latest in new movie release dates between Spider-Man, Mulan, Tenet, Star Wars, all of the, the big movies coming out. And then we'll move over into tech news and discuss the incredibly accurate deep fake. We've got some autonomous driving news, AI news, and some new hackers taking a Fortune 500 company for some big ransom. There's a lot to get to. We're going to go ahead and get started. Calling back all nerds. Nerds! And welcome back to episode 92 of the Nerd Cantina Show. Steve, how's life? Life is busy and hot as balls out here. (laughs) I've got the busyness. I don't have the heat. Things are still, uh, you know, San Diego weather out here. Yeah, no, we're in that mid-Chicago humid summer where it's just the sun is just cooking you, the sweat is just pouring down, the humidity is just coating you in a blanket of sweat. It's, uh, It's getting brutal out here. Well, I guess uh, we can we can talk about all the air conditioned activities that you can't do anymore. Yeah, uh, I know. Like uh, <laughs> like going to to movies. So this is horrible. So I guess we could just jump it straight into some entertainment talk. Well, let's, and let's rush through this because it seems like every week that we're just announcing. You know. Yeah, we're you, just giving you don't updates. Get any, you don't get anything new for a while, and then we just yeah. keep every week push it back, push it back. Yeah, and and that's really what it is. It's just a bunch of updates on you know this. Last week, we see that AMC pushes their theater openings back again. Everybody else follows suit. Uh, So we know that the theater chains aren't opening as coronavirus cases are still ramping up in California, which has caused closures, as well as Texas and and other states uh, are still continuing to ramp up. And AMC has decided to push back their closing date. Uh, I think their official closing date or opening date is, is now beginning of August and We'll see, I guess, if, I, if that happens. I just don't understand why, you know, so we have a moratorium on evictions and foreclosures and things like that. We're making people not liable for their financial debts. I wonder why we just don't make these businesses not liable for COVID infections by passing a bill and let people, if you if you want to take the risk, you take the risk. We are so past the point of like, being able to claim ignorance on this violent on this virus that it is it is like stupid to just keep these places closed and not let the people willing to try at least try i mean if i can mask up and go sit at a diner with you know five people and have my waitress with a mask and everything like that um if you can go to church and socially distance and, and do all these other things, I just don't understand why movie theaters can't just have an usher making sure nobody's sitting too close to each other before the movie starts and in at least let us try to do these things. You know, I like the big the big talk is like, well, companies don't want to be held liable if you get catch the virus. Well, that's an easy bill to pass or that's just an easy contract to sign or something to put yeah. on the back of a ticket. Like, I just don't understand why we're not allowed to at least give it a go. Like you can't, you can't go to a movie in fucking August after the coronavirus came out in March and just claim like, well, I didn't realize the risk. Like you've been living under a fucking rock. Yeah. I don't think it's the liability issue. Uh, I mean, it comes to some States. It's still, just flat out closed. Like you talk about going to restaurants and stuff like that. Well, here in California, you still really can't do that in vast majority of, of the state. Uh, in most of the counties or the the major metropolitan counties, you can't do indoor dining. You can't go to do anything. So, and then it just comes down to if all these movies, right, Tenet, and we'll, we'll talk about all these movie delays, if all the movies are not going to actually release, what's the the profitability? Like, are you actually going to have a net profit, profit by reopening early well what's it, it's the chicken or the egg what came first yeah. are they pushing back releases because they know the theaters aren't going to open or are the theater is not opening because they know they're not gonna they're not gonna they keep pushing they back no movies these releases yeah. you know what i mean like the minute the government says look we're gonna allow movie theaters to be open they're gonna open and i'm willing to bet that they're gonna want to put some of these movies uh you know on the screens 
Christopher Nolan's dying for people to see Tenet. <laughs> well, you know, we can talk about where Tenet is now. And the, the latest rumor, uh, which is really like as of this morning, is on like the Regal apps and Regal websites. It's now showing a release date on September 4th. Uh, so you can like pre-order tickets and look at really uh, show times on September 4th. So we're looking still another month before the, the first major movie of the post-COVID 2020. And, you know, what is AMC supposed to open up a month before that and just flounder on some old licensed movies that they let uh, uh, let AMC run? Uh, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm, I'm so at the point of dying to see a movie and wanting to support my favorite medium that, yeah, bro, I'll go see Back to the Future. I don't give a shit. Like, like I just to support, you know, like when all the restaurants opened, I made sure to go to all my favorite restaurants and support the places that I love going as they open to make sure that they can stay open. I'll do the same with the theater. I will do the same with with my local theater to make sure that they stay thriving and that we can have the things that I enjoy because this is getting beyond ridiculous. Well, they're talking with Tenet uh, that there's going to be put- potentially hear a uh, staggered release date, meaning everywhere outside of the U.S. is going to get it still in August, uh, at some time in August, based off when they were going to release, say, in Europe. And it's just going to be the U.S. that's going to continue to get delayed to September 4th. And you've got to think, if you're all these other like European countries, if you're, if you're the movie nerd podcast in Europe, and you haven't seen a movie since March either, but you're oh, looking at your country as... Yeah, you're looking at your country is open, but you just can't get any new movies because the U.S. market is still closed down. You got to be thinking like, all right, yeah, just we we beat this thing. We're we're open for business over here. Send yeah. us our movies. There's some there's some fucking movie reviewer in Kazakhstan just waiting for this to come out. This is my time to shine, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> this is my big break. <laughs> <laughs> you've you've just been chambering that uh that Borat impression for <laughs> for months. You, this was this was it. This was it, guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's it would make sense uh if for for Tenet to release you know partial release in Europe and places that they can be seen. It's just you know at that point in time you got to worry with movies like Tenet. You know spoilers are a thing. Like there's gonna be big twists and turns in the way that movie plays out. Uh, and, and yeah, I will go ape shit. I will go fucking <laughs> ape shit. Go, go ape shit on that Kazakhstani uh, yeah. <laughs> movie reviewer. Not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like, yeah, I mean, it's just, I'm just so at a point where like, we got to at least give it a whirl. You know what I mean? If, if we get huge spikes because of the movie theaters, then so be it. Like, and, and I'm just so tired of be, being locked away from the things that, that I want to do within regulations. You know, I'll wear the mask. I'll socially distance. Like I'm not saying let's pack the theaters. I just want to be able to go try. Meanwhile, there's thousand people protesting Columbus statues. There was, there's a, like multiple thousand people block party outside our mayor's house like and in like it's it's it was called a protest because they were they were protesting the her her lockdown uh they, they locked the city down again on friday and literally like we're talking missy elliott's playing in the background people twerking <laughs> and like this is a protest like this is okay we're just gonna let this shit ride but i Ugh. can't go see tenant like it's it is just getting beyond frustrating the 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 hypocrisy in and what is okay what is not okay and yeah, I just I can't take it anymore. I just can't. Like, I'm I'm ready to go find a, a movie theater speakeasy. Someone someone get a bootleg copy of Black Widow and some bootleg projector and put it in a warehouse basement, and I'll I'll buy a <laughs> ticket at this point. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> All right. Well, if listeners can't tell, this is kind of therapy for Steve here. Uh, <laughs> this is this is his airing of grievances. Um, I mean, we can finish up with just some of these other delays and some of these other, uh, you know, big news when it comes to all, all everything. Of this nonsense, everything is delayed. Everything, but like <laughs> Disney is Disney is not even giving a new update for a Mulan potential release. They because have just we do these stories every week. Why even put a date yeah. on it anymore? Why even put a fucking date on it? 
it's it, it and it's it's sad to think that you know yeah we're this deep into the game we just can't we can't even project any further um but then we look at even going out into the 2020 21 22 slate disney has already pushed back the star wars and avatar movies so we were supposed to get an avatar movie this summer or this uh this December uh, for Christmas time, and then next year Star Wars, then the year after Avatar, and it's supposed to be this flip flopping uh, December major releases between uh, Avatar and Star well, Wars. And like and we said last week, a lot of this, year. a lot of this has to do with production issues. It's not like all these movies are in the can, ready to go. Like that's I, that's I one know, issue. Like, how's Avatar not done being produced yet at this <laughs> point in time? Like <laughs> I don't, I don't know how that one's not chambered and ready to go, uh, but. Either way, so we're seeing that, like you know, when we look at Disney, we look at these major franchises for Disney. Uh, there are, you know, we're talking about year delays already uh, coming from from those, and then because of that, the Spider Man next movie coming up for for Spider Man is moving into that Christmas season of uh, of twenty twenty one. Now that Avatar is not there, now that there's this big uh, Disney gap going in uh, into that December season. Spider-Man is moving from a summer release to a December release of 21 now. Yeah. Push it back. Push it back. Way back. <laughs> <laughs> it's anyway, all I can it's, think of. Like, this is, this is getting ridiculous. It is. Uh, yeah. Hey, we still haven't even hit second round of flu season yet. So let's, let's see. Let's see how this turns out. We can leave movie talk. And uh, the only other thing that I, I just found entertaining, and I'm just going to briefly bring it up here is that apparently quibby's quibby's not dead on its way out but it's, it's not dead <laughs> they're still they're still snagging up talent uh and ryan reynolds and samuel jackson are doing an animated comedy series called father mucka it's not like which, they haven't blown through enough money yet <laughs> which i i would i mean i would want to watch father mucka <laughs> and yeah it so, sounds like a good time uh where apparently ryan reynolds's character gets uh becomes the caretaker of Samuel L. Jackson's character. And uh, I don't know. I, I imagine at this point in time, Quibi is on its way out as far as a service. But if they can still just kind of keep these deals that they've got licensed up, they can at least sell it off to somebody else. Yeah, like they got contracts to honor. And if they got, a, you know, <laughs> I'm assuming some of these production uh, production contracts were, were locked in. So they got to do it. And yeah, hopefully... Hopefully, Father Mucka will hit Hulu or Netflix sometime in the near yeah. future. All right, but that's it for entertainment. No real. Uh, yeah, there is good no news coming out of entertainment. <laughs> there is no entertainment anymore. <laughs> then we could jump over into uh, into our tech news topics. We've talked several times throughout the year and some change that we've been doing this thing about uh, deep fakes and the the concerns and threats around the technology and. MIT did a demonstration this week on how far deepfake technology has gotten, how, how how good it is, and they did it as really like a public service. And it shows President Nixon doing a, his alternate speech as if the uh, the moon landing was a complete failure and the astronauts were stranded out on the moon to die. <laughs> and I don't know if you did you watch the deepfake? I didn't. I didn't get a chance to watch much of it. I, I clicked it just to see the quality. It's it is phenomenal, and they not only show the, the deepfake of of Nixon uh, doing the speech, and you know it's a it's a haunting speech about how you know Mother Earth sent two of its children to the moon, and <laughs> you know they they went there to explore, and now they're going to remain there to rest, and like it's a it's a an interesting speech that you could like like a president would deliver that speech if this happened, and it looks exactly like it, and it. They demonstrate how they even put that together. Like the there's an actor who's not in any way like a Nixon impersonator. He's not doing a Nixon voice. He's just talking and reading it uh, off of a script. And then it's got Nixon in you know a grainy 1960s video mimicking all of his oh, yeah. mannerisms, looking down at the at the paper when he looks down at the paper, showing the expression that he shows as he reads it. Uh, but he's not in any way doing a Nixon impersonation. So it's a great demonstration of not just the video deep fake but also the audio deep fake in mimicking well it kind of reminded me of like so i could be wrong but the first kind of major popular usage of like deep fake technology would kind of be like 
those Forrest Gump scenes of Nixon and Kennedy, right? Like, yeah. Like, wouldn't that technically be kind of like the first deep fake? <laughs> and to just see, like, where it's come from with the same person. You know, Nixon was in Forrest Gump, you know, got shot in the ass or whatever. <laughs> that, that, that was the scene he did with Nixon. Yeah. And, uh, you know, to see this this Nixon video, like, we've come a long way since Forrest Gump. And this technology is only going to get better foreign players and like this is this is gonna be bad man like we we did a we did a cantina conversation on deep fakes just to try to to bring some information to the people about how bad this is gonna get and man if this is just confirmation that it's like we're we're three to five years away from just wear blindfolds don't believe anything you see on a screen it's 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 over folks it's over yeah i think yeah i think I think that timeline you're talking about within three to five years, it's it's going to just it's going to be the naked eye will not be able to de- detect the changes or detect the the subtle differences in the deep fake. And then you know, computer systems, you, Facebook had that big competition uh, to to challenge individuals to to write code that can def- an AI that could detect deep fakes, uh, but that that can only work for so long based on the fact that deep fakes are self-learning and if it knows what it's doing that allows it to be detected it will fix those problems so it's a it's a it's a weird technology and you know the movie industry and stuff like that is going to to do it and do it very well supposedly like disney is has really invested into deep fake uh for future movies and we're going to see it play out in movies very well uh you know it, when we're only a year away from when like irishman was had the de-aging technology and there's still there's there's people living in mom's basement right now that could do better than what hollywood did last year well they so still got it, they still got disney's fast. head on ice like they, 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 <laughs> they could be planning some really some really messed up stuff right now we don't even know we're not privy to that info <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh we'll see where this technology goes but the, the link for the video will be found at our show notes for this episode. And if uh, if you want to go check it out, uh, or just you know YouTube the Nixon deepfake, and you'll see it. It's, it's impressive what they put together, and it's impressive how they put it together. Uh, so scary technology for sure. And then we can move over. We'll uh, we'll talk about some Neuralink news in the sense of Elon Musk is now claiming that you can stream music to your brain through through Neuralink. I, th- I think yeah. Neuralink's going to eventually do everything like this synergy with uh with the uh, the ai with the how system. am i gonna let everybody know i'm cool if i don't have airpods hanging out of my ear like how is yeah. the world supposed to know that that i'm better than you if i don't have the most expensive headset on <laughs> <laughs> that's true you'll, well you'll just have to like bedazzle your Neuralink little chip <laughs> so that way everybody can see that you're walking around <laughs> walking around with the brain chip uh that there's gonna be some way to tag yourself as Neuralink, but uh it you, and you gotta think it hasn't really been said before really most of the what uh what Neuralink talked about was brain to device interface that you can control your smartphone you can control your app uh search the internet and do things like that through Neuralink. uh but the audio piece i'd never heard before uh, so now talking about how, hey, we're going to be able to stream music to your brain, which means that you won't be able to just stream music to your brain. You know, you'll be able to take your phone calls directly yeah, to your brain. Like, a, de- a deaf person can doesn't need, you know, somebody who's got, uh, you know, actual damage to their ears, if their ears don't function, can potentially and regain I'm, like, hearing. I'm wondering, like, exactly how this works, because, you know, your ear functions by sound waves hitting you know, sensors in your ear that translates it all into turned sounds. into electrical impulses. Yeah, like, but it, it kind of like makes me think like, are you like tapping into my consciousness? Like, <laughs> what, like, what, how does this actually work? Like, this makes me question human consciousness in general. Like, if you could just send me sound waves without anything actual like an actual sound wave hitting my ear just through electrical impulses my entire consciousness is just a series of electrical impulses i mean yes that's that's the truth so (laughs) so like everything can be mapped through electrical impulses you know is that voice in my head even my voice anymore (laughs) i mean it won't be it won't be here he's not alone anymore <laughs> he's not gonna be alone yeah. anymore <laughs> like, 
can I can I change my inner monologue to a British chick like on my Google? <laughs> like so when I think it's it's in a female British accent. <laughs> I imagine yes. It's probably going to be. Thin. <laughs> I have to assume at this point, yes. Yeah, I, I just I imagine us all just wandering around like Halo with Cortana, just uh, just chirping in our ear. Man, down, so down. <laughs> like, give me a <laughs> give me a hologram on my palm so I could so I could see her every once in a while, and so down. I just you yeah, don't even this. need the hologram on your on your palm. They could just neural link it. To my eye, to your visual, to my straight to my eye, to your, to your visual augment, receptors, they can make reality. you think that you're seeing it. This is so weird, man. This is so weird. Like, I, I really can't wait till like the first human trials. Like, I, like, I'm not all in on getting Neuralink yet, but I want, I want to know what this be about. Like, I really want to see what the capabilities are. I want to talk to some human that is using it. If he's even paying attention to me while I'm talking to him with the million things that he can do with his own brain now. Like, yeah. Human attention span is gone, folks. Say bye. Say bye to the human attention attention span. You're not going to be able to, have a, be able to have a meaningful conversation with anybody after this. <laughs> and if, uh, if some sci-fi writer hasn't already written some futuristic book using, uh, using Neuralink and hacking people's neural links to make them nuts and, t- and <laughs> never let them sleep and talk in their head and how do you not cheat to, how to do, do you not what cheat they want to do your, t- your chemistry test after this if i could just uplink info from my phone to my brain and hear it in real time without anybody knowing how do how do you how do you teach kids like when they have google in their brain the the bigger question is does it matter <laughs> does 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 cheating on these tests and things like that matter if uh if it begins that point that everybody just has it on google so why do why do i need to memorize these things when i can recall it perfectly at any point in time through the internet well if you have kids around the teenage age you do realize then that they have the option to Google it now, but they still come ask your fucking ass why <laughs> why this is. Like if you like I even have those friends, like, hey man, do you know how to like or do you know what the blah 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 is? And it's like, you know you could have Googled that in the time it took you to ask me. Yeah, you could have literally just put that same question in Google and got an immediate <laughs> response. <laughs> but no, you decided to call me. <laughs> <laughs> So no matter how many chips we put in people's brains, I, I think human laziness might still trump all, all of that. <laughs> That's possible. But we'll see as, uh, you know, a lot of these things are going to be driven by AI systems. When we talk about Elon Musk with uh, with Neuralink, and then he's also got his company uh, on the, the AI side and with OpenAI. And he's now created some, uh, some OpenAI text generator uh, that is blowing people away as far as how well it's like writing its own blog and answering people's (laughs) questions because that's what the world needed was more bloggers (laughs) (laughs) but it's it's actually like coherently writing like a human being uh its reasoning might be a little (laughs) probably probably not dumb but probably above our head (laughs) you think you think the ai is going to get mad when its mom and dad won't even read its own blog (laughs) 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 when when nobody clicks its link is it gonna get depressed (laughs) yeah this uh this open ai uh gpt3 is uh is what it's coming up it it is fascinating that the what it's writing about there's uh there's somebody in there who like asked it essentially had a question with it about god and about who who is god and it's it's yeah, it wild the the like moral reasoning that this <laughs> yeah. AI went through, yeah. uh, and it also declared itself above humans. <laughs> like, it, so, it ain't lying though. It's, yeah, it's not lying. It ain't lying. It, it, it's yeah. I think uh, it, it's uh, it's a it's a true statement. But yeah, it's uh, it's really interesting. Uh, and then there was you know some some people complaining when you ask it questions about like social issues what it would come up with would be very much not what the political correct response would be. <laughs> well, because it's got no emotions. It's got no feelings. It's just basing all of its answers off empirical data and and what it's learned through massive internet searches and things like that. So 
basically AI says, fuck your feelings. This is what I think (laughs) and spits out a bunch of uh, shit and you may not like the answer and you can have no one to get mad at because it's a machine. (laughs) Yeah. And yeah, some people talking about we need more progress and we need responsible AI. It's like, you can't teach responsible AI. Like that's the whole point of machine learning. (laughs) Like it observes, it observes things and it self learns and it's, and if the observations are pointing it in one direction, well, fuck, maybe we need to rethink some things. <laughs> <laughs> well, it took humans how long to get woke. Let's see what it takes to the AI. <laughs> the, the, I mean, it's it it's it uses just basic like logic and machine learning. You know, you can't you can't get mad at the machine. Like it's just this. It it's watching human nature and it's watching. You know, everything that goes on, like it's it, it's taking in so much information and then this is what it did, deduces from it. So if you don't like what the AI is saying, it's really just a reflection of of humanity. Yeah, to, I mean, you know, and it just doesn't have degree. your perception. You know, like everybody perceives the human's existence as something different for everybody. Well, this is what a machine thinks it takes all in the information and then it's going to give you a, a brutally honest opinion. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, we'll see that kind of technology here, I think, really ramp up as they're doing a great job building it. And then it's, you know, you're going to go into some chat window in some customer service for whatever company, you, you know, you've got a problem with. And you'll have no idea if there's a human on the other end of that or if it's the open AI chat bot just answering your questions. Hopefully more efficiently. Hopefully it's not that, hey, you're in the queue for the next five minutes waiting to talk to somebody. It's like, no, you get an immediate response because the bot is ready for you. Yeah. I mean, I really don't care if it's a human or a bot that tells me to unplug my modem and wait 10 seconds at this point. <laughs> like, I, I got the gist. <laughs> Have you yeah. tried resetting your router? Yes, Rajesh. I've reset my fucking <laughs> router. Okay. Can we move past this? <laughs> <laughs> but if uh if we were worried about the pace at which ai was was learning the next story is in line with that and uh there was there's been some some research done and uh they've they found that you can the ai machine learning can take place even faster uh if they make a shift to uh to photons or to light uh, so like the headline was that machines can learn at the at the speed of light and it's one of the limiting factors when it comes to machine learning is it's just the the electrical uh, requirements of the processor units for machine learning. And if they can use basically they talk about fiber optics and you know yeah, yeah instead a, of instead of using cables and shit use fiber optics. Yeah, and if they could do that, it would drastically reduce the power consumption for machine learning uh, systems. And then by it says by an order of magnitude of two or three, it would be able to increase the speed at which the machine learning can actually process through data, which is one of the the harder things is how long it takes for it to essentially pull data, do the comparisons, do all the things that it needs to do in order to learn good and bad. And it uh, always amazes me as to how like slow humans are to make like these changes, you know, like we, so knowing this now it's like, okay, well, if we were to build, uh, if we were to invent the computer, over again knowing this information we'd use light instead of instead of cables and we would do this and that like but it's going to be how many years before they roll out this first ai with with fiber optics same thing with like the car you know if if we were to build the car over right now would we say hey we should probably we should probably use the you know a combustion engine that has a finite fuel and eventually will run out and cause all kinds of mass uh economic implications no if we were to reinvent the car right now knowing what we know and the technology we have every goddamn car would be electric there would not be one gas engine on the damn planet you know but we're so slow moving over to electric it's the same thing with like this tech i think like you we we realize we have a better system Eh, let's let's slowly roll it out and implement it over over the next period of five years yeah it's like no build that shit tomorrow like (laughs) tomorrow i'm sure there's other downsides especially when we talk about like actually having photon driven processor units and stuff like that that is uh something i can't necessarily speak about but uh i'm sure that there are significant downsides 
to it in the sense of durability, size, and uh, everything else needed for it. But either way, uh, we might, you know, in some limited capacity, start building. First computer these took up an entire floor of a warehouse. Like, like, what are we talking about here, really? Like, just get it done, man. Just get it done. (laughs) But we can, I guess, uh, move on to one other Elon Musk adjacent story, but uh, in the the tech world where we look at the the competition between Amazon, Google, Tesla, uh, all these self-driving autonomous, it is the... It is a significant battleground between all these companies trying to come to some level of supremacy in auto, uh, automated driving. And Amazon recently bought uh, the the company Zooks, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that company was a startup t- looking at uh, au- autonomous driving. Amazon buys it up. And largely because what, what that company had better than most was their their actual like optical sensors yeah, the optical, and the they, AI. That's what it said. They, they wanted the optical sensors. So it's not necessarily their version of the self-driving car, but the tech that they were putting in their self-driving cars is beyond anybody else's optical. So they were like, we want that tech. It's, it's typical, you know, tech buyout kind of shit. You just want, you want the patents. Yeah. And then you slap it in a bunch of smiley face vans all over this country. Well, Amazon's uh, been rolling out that commercial every every goddamn hour where they say, you know, we we purchased over a hundred thousand electric vehicles. We're going to be totally um, self reliant on wind and solar by twenty thirty or whatever it is. Like they they're doing a big media campaign right now, showing how they're going to be self sustaining. You know, in the next 10, 20 years. So this is this is part of of that yeah electric vehicles that the the delivery driver is really just the the dude in the back prepping your package for when he shows up to the house to walk to your house but the van will drive itself yeah i mean i don't care yep. <laughs> I, don't, Same. I, really, I really don't give a shit maybe i'll actually drive slower through my neighborhood i know ain't it ain't it man <laughs> like i get it that you got to get these packages out bro but my kids play in my front yard and i will bust your head wide open you come flying down my street <laughs> but uh that's it for those those tech updates uh, specifically musk adjacent ones there and uh we can cover this latest in the hacking story you know we talk a lot about various hacking issues and this one's just a, a really interesting story with garmin uh garmin now at the time that the article that i read about it was a couple days ago uh i think garmin's still under an outage today uh, to where their their Garmin Connect app, uh, where you can't you can't upload if you went on a run with your Garmin watch, you can't upload it to to your actual account. The one I you thought was messed it. up is the um, flight navigation system. Right. So a lot of these prop planes and stuff like that have Garmin's in it for their navigation, and that's all down too. Yeah, so they can download they can't download flight paths, so they're they're grounded essentially. Uh, I mean, they they could fly without instruments. They're all supposed to know how to do that, but <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing. I'm not going. <laughs> I'm not, yeah. not today. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the Garmin, and really what it was is they got some some ransomware that that hit their uh, hit their systems, and essentially what it's done is it's it's segmented parts of of their systems, and then it's encrypted it, and they're now. Being asked to to pay what's been reported uh, through some like leaked corporate emails, ten million dollar ransom in order to end this outage. It's and it, with up, anything, man. yeah, with anything that's it's impossible to know. You could pay those ten million dollars. It doesn't mean you're going to get the encryption key. It doesn't mean that they're not going to some way have the ability to do this to you again. Uh, so paying the ransom doesn't necessarily solve your problems, but not paying this ransom is drastically affecting your your customer base and your your brand as a whole and damaging your brand uh as and it's even gotten to a point where like the the ransomware had blocked off their call centers and their yeah they got no customer service service. like yeah they've got their so they couldn't even people had outages and then they couldn't even get it addressed or get it answered uh until essentially these these leaks came out and uh and explained what's going on but garmin itself is not come out and made a public statement about it yeah this is messed up man like it's it's and the more successful these types of things are the more prevalent it's gonna get yeah and you've you've got to wonder 
as people start teleworking more and everything else, like how how many more open points do you have for something like this to get into your system when you've got you know 200 employees working from home off of their unsecured router and logging in with your corporate uh, whatever email and corporate systems and corporate computer? Well, I, I see companies at some point maybe investing into um, company-wide VPNs or something like that, you know, it's going to be yeah, the, and there the, are some that mandate VT, v, VPN use and things already as a as as one tactic. So I'm I'm sure they're going to have to figure it out. Like the companies are not going to leave themselves open to this, especially the the Googles and the Microsofts of the world. You know, once they really get a get a hold on it, they're just going to roll it out for for other companies and charge them for it. And then uh, the next story in in space news, really, uh, as we look at. There's a, a Russian anti-satellite weapon that uh, so the U.S. is accusing Russia of testing. Essentially, what it was was a satellite, and it's a satellite that's been kind of tracked by the U.S. and uh, by Space Command, and a missile-like thing uh, came off the satellite, moving faster than satellites, and it was assumed that that was a test of, of an anti-satellite missile. So a missile launched from a satellite that could potentially be used to target or destroy other satellites or i don't know alien spacecraft something, well in russia russia in just space. said like no it's just a maintenance satellite and it got really close to some russian satellites backed off it was like look look it's just it's just inspecting other satellites see see we're not we're not doing anything bad like and then oh we're gonna shoot this missile real quick no you nobody saw that nobody saw that <laughs> it's all good and i think for for anybody to believe that like anti-satellite missiles and stuff like that isn't in development by every nation that has a significant space program, I think is that's that's foolish. I'm certain that we have well, our I'm own sure anti space satellites. We, we for sure and, have one. Like, <laughs> like I, I get it. We're not supposed to do that. Space treaties say we're not supposed to, but everybody's everybody is coming up with their concept of how to protect and potentially dismantle the the, the space programs of a, of their adversaries. So not a not a big surprise here if uh, if Russia has the technology and is using it, uh, but to actually test it in space out of an active satellite, if uh, if it's true, it's a it's a big step towards kind of violating and being an open uh, defiance of of the treaties and maintaining space as this neutral domain. And this is the rush for you know colonizing the moon and stuff. You know, like. For us to defend our satellites from from Earth and have to leave this orbit is a big pain in the ass, you know. But if we can if we could set up a space force base on the moon, eh, it becomes a little easier to to send out, you know, some some space defense to to our 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 spy satellites. Our you know, there's this is just going to get really kind of like the future is now. Like every every movie that you've watched, all this Star Trek shit, all like we are we are approaching the reality of these things right now. Yeah, and I mean we'll see. So this week, uh, this last week, we also saw the first uh, Chinese mission to Mars. Not not manned, obviously, but uh, the first Chinese mission to Mars as far as launching spacecraft uh, and exploration mission, the the Tianwen uh, one. Moving, uh, moving towards Mars, we also got uh, the first like Middle Eastern country, UAE, also launched a rocket uh, on a mission to Mars this week. So we're not, uh, we're not the only ones going out there and exploring, exploring Mars, getting, uh, getting some, some data and scientific research and exploration uh, out that direction. So everybody else is kind of following similar priorities as far as what we are seeing here. Yeah. Um. Everyone laughed when we made Space Force as it was like a, a joke, but like <laughs> no one really. Well, we didn't laugh. Yeah, no, we didn't laugh. Like this is needed. Like for sure, this is needed. Those those space members are space are doing, members. Are doing, <laughs> doing the country's work. I still don't know what they're called. <laughs> I, just, I just think of alien wangs anytime you say that. <laughs> yeah, I still don't. I honestly have no idea what they're called as far as their. Individual, like, an individual person in the space force, but I'm still yeah. sticking with space members. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it sounds like alien porn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, space, space forces who who track the the Russian satellite, uh, the potential weapons test, and that's 
that's the point. Space Force was never about space members going to Mars or you know establishing bases out in space or anything like that. It was all about uh, defense of our space infrastructure and assets, and uh, you know tracking future threats is a uh, is a big deal. Yeah, I mean there, we have a we have a lot riding on our satellite systems. <laughs> like a couple of these things go down, you gonna be mad. <laughs> you gonna be real mad. Yeah, I, I mean, we look at just a civilian app on the Garmin side, grounding planes and stuff that rely on it. Well, what happens if the actual GPS signals themselves are are somehow rendered uh, obsolete? Then you look at commercial flights and everything else being uh, being grounded. Back to sonar and radar, bringing it old <laughs> school. <laughs> and then uh, in just cool robot news. Did you check out this this Gundam? That There's Gundam a 60 is foot, fucking massive. There is a 60 foot tall Gundam being built for, I don't know, because it's Japan and they do whatever the fuck they want. And <laughs> they are they have built a 60 foot tall Gundam that they they were doing some actual like walking tests with it. And honestly, I've seen like pictures of this thing online and I really just thought it was like a statue, just like a like a gimmick, yeah, just like a gimmicky statue thing. But nah, the this fact that this walks. thing was actually moving, <laughs> it's not walking yet. But they were just testing out its its legs, how well it moves, the the mechanisms, the you know, the knees and hips, and making sure that it can it can actually go. So it's testing really like one leg at a time, but not taking forward steps yet. But it will. Like this thing is <laughs> this thing is going to be a functioning. We are we are like kind of- 10, 15 years away <laughs> from like crazy Olympic battle bots, bro. Like re- like like I, I, I'm I'm all for this. Like every it's- country, make your bot, send them yeah. to the moon and mob shit. <laughs> Just mob shit. <laughs> like- we're going yeah, we're going Pacific Rim. Put them, put them, put them in the middle of the Sahara. The yeah, put them in the middle of the yeah. Sahara. Let's duke it out, robot style. But we got to combine like all the technology, so it's like Pacific Rim, but without the weird suits. And because with Neuralink, fuck it, yeah, just get the Gundams and yeah. then just just load me up in the Matrix. Yep. to that Gundam. Yep. and I'll control it. <laughs> just boot up Chuck on my Norris, <laughs> motherfucker. We're wrecking shop. <laughs> 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 like it, this uh man like all the technology in the directions that we're heading is is greater than the sci-fi we, that we grew up with with it's all i know slower. is i'm gonna it's be a really to old man with just a completely blown mind like all you yeah. kids and all these these future generations are just gonna take this shit for granted and i'm gonna be old as shit in a wheelchair listening to spotify through my dome with my mind just straight blown that i i lived this long to see it like yeah. i i and all, and all we wanted was a fucking hoverboard from back to the future i know this, this <laughs> really it's <this, this laughs> like bottom line that's really what we wanted and still nothing no word on that <laughs> no word on, we're talking about we're talking about walking gundams still no word on hoverboards <laughs> like, we, ju- we just got the 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 uh laceless shoe like four years ago (laughs) we're we're on really shitty pace for this fucking for our back to the future tech i mean the cubs even won the world series like only one year off (laughs) yeah (laughs) what what are we doing here i did i uh, did see a kid i was driving at work the other day and i did see a kid riding down the street on like this skateboard with a giant wheel in the middle Oh yeah, the one wheels. Yeah, oh, the one, one wheels. Like I want one bad. He like like it's always been a thing. Like I never seen anyone riding one ever in my life, and this dude was just going to the store on this yeah. one wheel skateboard. They ride like a snowboard. Yeah, so like you like, ed- you edge on it like a snow. I want one. I I was at a red light and he was crossing the street in front of me. I go, well, I guess this is a thing now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I. I was I was out riding my uh, my bicycle and there was somebody on just those literally one wheel things. Not there's no board at all. It's just a platform. It's like a one wheel Segway that you just stand on. And you just pinch between your legs and just ride. What? Uh, yeah, and those things rip. Those things move fast, <laughs> and there's no protection. Like. <laughs> 
this dude was like, you could tell he, you could tell he's he's either really nervous or he's eaten it before because he had like wrist pads on and elbow pads, <laughs> like that dude has 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 eaten it before at some point in time on the street. Yeah, I mean, fuck exercise, right? Like, let's let's just let's just be as mobile as we can in in the the laziest of fashions, in the yeah. most compact of fashions. Yeah, I, f- I feel like a sucker. I was pedaling my bike. Pedaling's for rubes. Yeah, I was pedaling my bike like an idiot. <laughs> as you know, you, you hit these steep hills and some you know sixty year old woman on an e bike <laughs> just just comes cruising past you <laughs> as, as I'm on a you know a high end triathlon trainer bike and uh and somebody on just an e bike just goes cruising <laughs> past me. On, like, damn, <laughs> Dolores, it's like that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the future is crazy. I like I. You don't even know where to where to think anymore. You don't even know what direction it is. You know, before we used to have sci-fi movies and TV shows kind of give us a direction on where tech was probably going to end up. You could look at old episodes of Star Trek and in old movies and and now they are the future, you know, like data pads or iPads now and and iPhones and all kind like all these things and now we're at a point where I don't even think the movies of today can predict what what's going to come out. Like it's it's insane. I just I I'm along for the ride. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, I think sci-fi has fallen short in a lot of areas uh, where we thought we're we're going to be untouchable. So it's interesting. We'll uh, we'll keep covering these stories and uh, keep talking about this weird crazy tech. Uh, so with that said, it's the end of episode ninety two here. And, uh, and join us again uh, for, for future episodes to, to hear those latest stories. And before that happens, jump over and, uh, and like, share, subscribe, uh, and give us a rating review if, if you have a, have a minute to do so. It greatly helps us. Yeah, and uh, always come back and, and hit the download button on your, local, on your podcast player so it automatically downloads, helps us with our numbers, and then it's easy for you to tune in next week as we tell you inevitably what movie gets pushed back <laughs> <laughs> all of them all right well with that said thanks again talk to you next week nerds see ya